dear viewers of The Pioneer, how are you doing? I hope you're healthy and well. As The Pioneer, we are back again with our new report on the Russia-Ukraine war. In a moment, we will evaluate the latest developments on the front line with a map. According to the latest reports, the front line was active today as well. In fact, there is not much that we can call our unusual. However, as we have stated in many of our reports, some points sometimes calm down and sometimes gain movement. This was the case on the Kherson front line in our last few reports. However, here the calmness was broken again and active moments started. Especially the Zaporizhia front line and the Donetsk front line are among the regions where there are quite active moments. Let me emphasize this. We believe that the fate of the war is written on the Donetsk and the Zaporizhia front line. The side that gains superiority here will gain an advantage across the front line. But of course, this is a process. Developments in the process may be of a nature to change our opinions. So what is the latest situation on the front line? Let's take a look at the developments together. As the Pioneer team, we continue to bring the Russia-Ukraine war to your screens. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so as not to miss our daily map report and reports on the HN. You can also support me and my hardworking team by using the super thanks button below the videos. Let's start if you are ready, the Pioneer Report. Let's start our map report by examining the latest situation on the Kherson front line. First, let's see the Kherson front line on the map. Once again, we are talking about the Marines of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. As we have often mentioned, the Marines of the Ukrainian Armed Forces play a very important role here. Look at here. Just on the east bank of the Dnipro River, there are units of the Russian Armed Forces here, such as the 127th Separate Intelligence Brigade, the 810th Marine Infantry Brigade, the 24th Motorized Rifle Brigade, and the 385th Motorized Rifle Regiment. However, according to local sources, there are already naval infantry units of the Ukrainian armed forces in the region. Despite all the power of the Russian armed forces in the region, they still have not been able to break the resistance of the Ukrainian marines. There is an intense pressure of the Russian armed forces and the Ukrainian naval infantry units, especially in the direction of Krynki and Antonivka. Nevertheless, the naval infantry units of the Ukrainian armed forces continue to protect the bridgeheads in the region. In recent days, senior Ukrainian sources have said that the next counterattack will be focused directly on the Crimean Peninsula. It is for this purpose that we can evaluate the Ukrainian marines' continued desire to maintain a presence here. This is because the land route to the Crimean Peninsula passes through the Kherson front line. Let us continue with the artillery activity in the region. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Kherson, Antonivka, Krynki, Dneprovskov, and the Yantarny. In turn, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted positions of the Russian armed forces in Olopristan, Kardashinka, Kohani, Malaya Kardashinka, Oleshki, Pechanidivka, Poima, and Pitlitsny. Now let's move on to the latest developments on the Robotny offensives. Yes? The Russian offensive in the Robotny continues. Units of the Russian armed forces continue their intensive offensives into the west of the Robotny. We can see that the artillery units of the Russian armed forces are carrying out quite strong attacks in this area. However, the defense power of the Ukrainian armed forces is also quite strong. Russian troops have still not been able to make any progress in the region. Moreover, it is reported that the Ukrainian troops have started to make attempts to advance in this region. On the other hand, there are also attacks by the units of the Russian armed forces on Novoprokopivka and Verbov. However, Russian troops have still not made any progress in this region. In the direction of Verbov and Novoprokopivka, the defense forces of the Ukrainian armed forces are resisting quite strongly. Let us continue with the artillery activity in the region. According to the latest report, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Ukrainian positions in the Robotny, Malaitek Magda, Malishurbiaki, Pityahatki, and Lukpov. On the other hand, in contrary, of course, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted positions of the Russian armed forces in Marini, Dolinka, Lugov, and Lizny. Let's continue our report by analyzing the latest developments on the Donetsk front line. According to the latest reports, 
although Donetsk frontline units of the Russian armed forces continue to attack Novomikhailivka from the south and southeast. Russian sources share remarkable information on this issue. According to the Russian sources, the Ukrainian armed forces in the area are fighting a fierce defensive battle. No positions have been captured so far. The same cannot be said for the other regions. According to the unconfirmed reports, units of the Russian armed forces have made slight progress in Gorogorivka, Nevolskoye and Permovskoye districts. However, as we mentioned, this information has not yet been confirmed. On the other hand, Russian military units are pressing in Avdeevka, Stepi and Berdyachi near the Kirk factory. It seems possible to talk about a limited progress in Berdyachi, albeit limited. Let's continue with artillery activity in the region. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Oleksandrnopil, Kermiaki, Berdyachi, Avdeevka, Severnoi, Permovskoye and Semenyavki. In contrast, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Opitny, Pitsky, Volidny and Vasily. Let's continue our report by analyzing the latest developments on the Bakhmut front line. According to the latest reports, there is an intense counter battle on the Bakhmut front line on the hills northwest of Klishchivka. Although Russian troops are making an intense effort to capture the hills, they have not been able to make any gains. The Russian armed forces are also attacking Ivanivsky. They have no success here either. However, they are pushing back Ukrainian troops in Bogdanivka. It is likely that the Shasoviar area will become the near focal points of the conflict. Let us continue with the artillery activity in the region. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Ivanivsky, Chesivyar, Bogdanivka, Klishchivka, and Andreevka. In contrast, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Khoromov, Kordomoivka, Zelenopilia, and Bakhmut city center. Let's also look at the Luhansk front line. According to the latest reports on the Luhansk front line, the Russian armed forces are carrying out attacks near Terni. However, there are no results here. On the other hand, the situation has changed slightly in the Sinkivka region. The Ukrainian armed forces left their positions in the northern and central parts of the village and begun to build defensive lines further back. This area is now in the gray zone. Now it's your turn. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think the Ukrainian army is successful in the defensive war? What needs to be done to stop the Russian troops? How do you assess the situation on the Kherson front line? Do you think the Ukraine should further strength its Kherson front line? Let me know in the comments. I read and care about all the comments.